The offseason has come to an end and it's now time to kick off the 2025 campaign as the Milwaukee Brewers play host to the Cincinnati Reds here at American Family Field while the beer makers are going to be sending out their ace right-hander Shane Bieber here on opening day and he'll be opposed by the flamethrowing right-hander Hunter Green fresh off his six-year extension and looking to kick off his 2025 season on a good note. And he'll start things off bottom of the first by striking out Brandon Lau and Sh Stranding a man at first base. Move things on to the second inning. Tyrone Taylor absolutely destroys a pitch down the right field line. A slow roller into right field. Anderson gets to it rather quickly, but it is still going to be a two-bagger for Taylor. But fortunately, Hunter Green is nasty. Strikes at Mitchell for out number one. His second K of the game for his third K and second out of the inning. It is Eldon Starnes going down on the slider. And then it would bring up Christian Yelich. He is a pair of shoes up there as he goes down looking. Three Ks in the inning for Green. Move things on to the third inning where he was not so lucky. Sal Freilich, the Boston College man, ground ball up the middle with one out. It's a base knock. Then it would be Bryce Terang who pokes one into left field. Back-to-back -back base knocks for the beer makers. Brings on Brandon Lau. Pitch gets in the dirt away from Stevenson. Both runners are able to move up into scoring position. So Lau now at the dish. Spits on ball four. And he draws himself a walk. Bases are drunk for Milwaukee. And Tyrone Taylor does actually hit this one well as it gets in for a base knock. That's going to drive in two runs as the beer makers strike first. They go up 2-0 here, but Green clutches up and strikes at Mitchell to strand the other two runners, but not before two come across. So now we move things on to the top of the fourth inning where J.P. Crawford rips one off the right field wall. Galich gets to it, gets it into the cutoff, man, but it is going to be a two-bagger there to lead off the inning for Crawford. Then a ball would get past the catcher, allow Crawford to move up to third base. He's 90 feet away. Unfortunately, Brian Anderson would then ground out to the left side, so Crawford cannot move up. But then it brings up the power hitter, Lamont Wade, one of the newest Reds, grounds one to the right side on the hanging curveball, and that will be the first run of the game for the Reds. It's now a 2-1 ball game. Hunter Green then blows a fastball right by Sal Friedlich to end the fourth inning. Move things on to the fifth. It's Bryce Terang laying down a perfect bunt, but De La Cruz even better defense. Beautiful play there to gun the speedy runner at first base. And then the inning would come to an end, stranding a runner at first base as Hendrick puts one away right in front of the wall. Move things on top of the sixth now. Brian Anderson pokes one into right field. That's going to land in for a base knock to keep the inning alive there with two outs. Then it brings up Lamont Wade, full count. He goes inside out and bloops one into left field. So back-to-back -back bloop hits there for Cincinnati. Brings up Tyler Stevenson, who powers one to right center field. You hang him, he bangs him. Out to the Cincinnati bullpen, a three-run blast as it's now a 4-2 to two ball game here in Milwaukee. The Reds jump out on top here, move things on to the bottom of the sixth where Brandon Williamson, the former TCU Horned Frog, comes on here for Cincinnati. Making his first appearance of the season, obviously, gives up a ground ball at the second base. Crawford knocks it down, but it's going to be an infield single for Mitchell. Then it brings up Starnes, so it's a line drive right back at Williamson's face. Look out! Hits him in the head. Wall's a little lob throw to first. is not enough to get the runner, so Williamson fortunately only has a black eye somehow. Avoid serious injury, so he has to come out. Ron Marinaccio, the Times River North man, comes on in here for his 2025 debut with two on, nobody out, and he would proceed to get Yelich to fly out to left field. Nobody moves up. Then it brings up Pedro Severino, who goes down on the slider. So suddenly, two down, still two on. And it brings up the Boston College man, who flies out to left field. This one's going to be caught by Hendrick as Marinaccio gets out of the jam and keeps the 4-2 lead intact. Then we move things on to the seventh, where De La Cruz pokes one into left field. That's a base knock to kick off the inning. Then it's Johnny Fagan, who comes up to the dish, and he is going to have himself a runner in scoring position as De La Cruz goes and swipes second base and then Fagan crushes one to left field this one over the head of the left fielder that is going to be a double easy double for Fagan it makes it a 5-2 ball game 
Ryan Weathers then enters in the bottom of the seventh here for Cincinnati. And he would proceed to be one out away from getting out of the inning scoreless, but instead Brandon Lau, 3-2 count, takes it into the Milwaukee bullpen as it's now a 5-3 ball game here. Lau's first home run of the season move things on to the eighth where Tyler Rogers, the submariner, comes on, picked up in the offseason through free agency, and he would work a scoreless frame. He strikes out Severino to end the inning. Amir Garrett came on for the beer makers in the ninth inning and Johnny Fagan crushes the ball once again to left field. This time it's going to carry Johnny Fagan, power hitter possibly. A solo shot makes it a 6-3 lead here for the Reds. Move things on to the bottom of the ninth inning now as Liam Hendricks will come on looking for the save, the Australian himself. And he would proceed to work a pop fly into foul territory. Stevenson ranges over, puts it away, and that is your ball game as the Cincinnati Reds come out on top here on opening day. They take out the Milwaukee Brewers here at American Family Field by a score of 6-3. Noted power hitter Johnny Fagan picks up player of the game honors. He went three for four in the day with a home run and a double. Tyler Stevenson had a three-run blast as well. Hunter Green goes five innings, allows seven hits, but he does strike at seven Brewers batters. One walk and only two earned runs given up. Liam Hendricks picks up a save in his first Reds appearance. Now, if you remember from the offseason video, the Reds did indeed place a waiver claim on Andrew Painter of the Philadelphia Phillies, and it turns out that that claim did end up going through. So Andrew Painter is now a member of this 2025 Phillies, or Reds ball club, rather. He will be wearing number 22 here in Cincinnati, and he is actually going to slot into that number five starter role while Chase Petty is going to be a member of the bullpen. That means that there's going to be an odd man out, and that odd man out is Dylan Coleman, although I would say he would probably be back at some point this season. I do want to get him some innings in the big leagues, but for, at least for now, he's going back down to AAA Louisville. Now back in Cincinnati here at Great American Ballpark as the Reds are going to be playing host here on their home opener to their rival Chicago Cubs. Here looking to kick off the home schedule with a W. Toe in the slab for the Red Legs is the left-hander Big Stu. Stuart Bradshaw making his first start of the season. We'll start things off top half of the first inning. Nico Horner gets one off the end of the bat. That's going to bloop into right field for a base knock to kick off the game. So he's on first. Then it brings up Nick Madrigal, and he's going to hit one out to left field. Back-to-back -back singles there for the Cubbies to start things off. Now it's going to be Ian Happ at the dish. And he comes up and also is going to get a blue pit. Lands in front of Merced in center field. That's going to score a run. It's now a 1-0 Chicago lead. Now it's Patrick Wisdom at the dish, and he would proceed to strike out as Bradshaw starts to clutch up here with runners on the corners. Gets one down. Then he would get a pop fly from Brennan Davis in the infield. De La Cruz there to put it away for out number two. Can of corn for him. And then it would be Seiya Suzuki going out to foul territory. Yandy Diaz coming on to put that one away and only one run comes across for the Chicago Cubs. So move things on to the second inning. Michael Chavis ground out and Taylor Walls showing off the defense, ranging to his left. Nothing else going in that inning, so we move things on to the bottom half of the third. And, and, and Ahmed Rosario comes up and hits one into left field. That's a base knock, and then he proceeds to show off the speed here as he swipes second base. He's in there with a swiped bag into scoring position. So then Merced at the dish is going to be a stole the dish as Rosario gets caught up on a ball in the dirt. Just gets caught in a run down. Just some bad base running there from Rosario. Strands himself. Nothing going for the Reds in the inning. So by top of the fourth here as Bradshaw walks Wisdom to lead off the inning. Now with one out, it's Suzuki at the dish, and he's going to rip a ball into left field. Rosario, for some reason, does not make the play on this. Instead, just lets it land in front of his glove. So it's first and second here for Chicago. And that's going to be a chopper left side, or right side, rather. J.P. Crawford goes to second with it, somehow gets that lead runner. So now it's two on, two outs, and Bradshaw blows that speed ball by Wilson Contreras, and he strands two runners. It's still a one nothing game here in Cincinnati. Move things on to the sixth inning now. Rosario at the dish again. He's going out to left field once again. His second hit of the game is a single. Throw gets away from the second baseman, but Rosario does hold up at first base. 
and then Merced would hit one into center field, lands in for a base knock. Rosario uses his fleet feet to go first to third, and it's now runners on the corners here for Cincinnati, as then Merced goes and swipes second base, and now there's two men on in scoring position for the Reds, as Taylor Walls pokes one into right field. That's going to score two runs here as two fleet-feeted runners come on to score, and it's now suddenly a Cincinnati lead. 2-1 is your score. Walls then goes and uses his fleet feet to go and swipe second base, get himself in a scoring position. Lefty on lefty, J.P. Crawford pops one up into left center field. Davis puts it away. Walls has to retreat. Brings up Tyler Stevenson, who powers one out to right center field. But unfortunately, it is going to be caught by the right fielder, Suzuki. Walls does tag up the third base, though. Then it brings up Anderson, who mashes one to left center field. This one's going to get over the head of Brennan Davis up against the wall. It's an RBI double and now a 3-1 Cincinnati lead. Braylon Marquez came on for the Cubbies in the seventh inning, making his second appearance of the season, facing Johnny Fagan, who continues to crush the ball here earlier in the season as he goes out to left center field up against in the gap. It's going to be a leadoff double for him. Then it brings up the platoon first baseman, Yandy Diaz, who almost absolutely crushes this one, but it's just, just barely foul. So he has to get back in the batter's box and then gets rung up on a perfectly placed down and in fastball. Unfortunate for Diaz. And then it brings up Rosario as he rips one into left field. This one's going to get in for a hit, get over, get past the left fielder as he tries to reach for it. That's going to score a run. It's now an RBI double. 4-1 is your score. Now onto the eighth inning, Brian Anderson at the dish with two outs, and he gets plunked by the pitch from Braylon Marquez, so he'll take his base to keep the inning alive. De La Cruz then comes up and muscles one out to right center field. This one's going to get into the gap as well, up against the wall. Anderson's going to score from first base, and De La Cruz has himself an RBI double. It's now a 5-1 lead here for Cincinnati. Rowan Wick then came on here for the Cubs to try to get out of the jam. Goes down to Fagan 3-0, and he rips one into left field. That's going to score De La Cruz. It's now a 6-1 lead here for the Red Legs. Move things on to the ninth inning. Foster on for a second inning of work, and he ends up getting the two-inning save as he goes around the horn. 5-4-3 as he works the ground ball, and the Reds win this one 6-1 here over the Chicago Cubs here on their home opener at Great American Ballpark. Ahmed Rosario gets player of the game honors and his Reds debut as the lefty platoon man in left field gets three hits on the day. De La Cruz goes two for four with a double. So does Fagan. Stuart Bradshaw, seven innings, six hits, two Ks, two walks, and only one earned run given up. Took a while for the Cincinnati Bats to get going, but Bradshaw did his job and kept them in it the whole time until they exploded in the sixth inning. And then, like I said, DeAndre Foster pitched the eighth and ninth, gets the two-inning save here, even with the five-run victory. So we are now here about halfway through the month of April, still very early on into the season, but we are about to take on the Blue Jays. So we have either not played at all or played very early on in the series and haven't played in a while. So they do have a few names to their roster here that are new. Biggest one is former Brewer Corbin Burns as a member of their team. J.D. Davis is a part of the middle of the order for them. They've brought over Kike Hernandez and Christian Arroyo together from the Boston Red Sox. And then Paul DeYoung is their shortstop because he continues continues to get shots starting every day at shortstop in this series. Just teams keep giving him the opportunity, and he keeps being like the worst bat in the league. Also, old friend Tyler Naquin is a member of their bench after uh, spending a few years with the New York Yankees, was on their team last year here in Toronto, and now he's entering his second season as a member of the Blue Jays. They do have a very, very good rotation here in Toronto as well. Alec Manoa and Jose Barrios are consistently in the top uh, top arms of the American League. Corbin Burns obviously is very good. Kevin Gaussman's very good, and they also have Matt Manning as their fifth starter. And then they have a very good, very solid back end of their bullpen with Emmanuel Classe as well. 
So once again, here in Cincinnati, as the Reds are going to be playing host to the Toronto Blue Jays in some interleague baseball. The tall, lanky lefty here, Nick Lodolo, is going to be the one getting the nod here for the Reds, looking to start his 2025 campaign on the right note. And then Corbin Burns going for the Blue Jays. First time this Reds ball club has seen him since he was pitching for the Brewers. So take a look at the Reds lineup on the day, listed 1-9, as well as the Blue Jays lineup, listed 1-9. We'll start things off top half of the first inning one on one out and then Vladimir Guerrero Jr. grinds into a 4-6-3 double play to end the inning move things on bottom of the frame now JP Crawford up the middle that's a base knock there with one out so he's on first brings up Brian Anderson who would proceed to just watch this pitch go past the catcher Kirk and allow uh, Crawford to move up the second base. And then Anderson grounds one past the diving glove of Candelario at third base. And that is going to be an RBI single for Anderson as the Reds strike first. 1-0 is the score. On to the top of the second now. Christian Arroyo ground ball to short. Walls flip to the second baseman as they get out of that inning. Top of the third now. Paul DeYoung goes down swinging on the two-seam fastball, trailing away from him. Then it's Kike Hernandez who also does that, but with the changeup. So back-to-back -back K's for Lodolo. And then the inning would come to an end on a Victor Robles ground ball out to second base. Easy play for Crawford. And it's three scoreless for Lodolo. On to the fourth inning. Chopper at the third base. Runner on third. Easy end of the inning. Strand that runner. Still scoreless here for the Blue Jays. Top of the fifth. And look at this diving play from De La Cruz. Defense, defense, defense. That is what this team is about. And De La Cruz showing it off there. Kirk, obviously not the fastest runner, but just an absurd diving play from De La Cruz. Gets to his feet and fires a rocket across the diamond as Wade puts him away. So now, later on in the inning, it's going to be a line drive from Arroyo over to Crawford. Batted down by his glove and then, for whatever reason, decides to try to go to second base. So he gets gunned down for the second out and then a chopper over to De La Cruz. Easy play for him. Still scoreless for the Blue Jays. So top of the sixth here, Lodolo still on the hill, obviously. And it's going to be Kike Hernandez hitting one into the right field corner to lead off the inning. And even with Anderson's arm, he does have that double. So he's on second base. Then a ground ball to first would move him over. So one down runner on third base brings up Candelario. And he proceeds to crush one to left center field. Jay Allen puts it away on the run, but it does allow the runner to tag up on the sack fly as it's now a tie ball game. Bottom of the sixth and Lamont Wade says, no, no, no. Reds are taking the lead. Out into the bullpen for the Blue Jays. A solo shot for Lamont Wade as he hits one of what will hopefully be many here with this Reds ball club as he puts the Reds back on top. 2-1 here, bottom of the eighth now. We move things on a little bit later. Austin Hendrick committing some lefty-on-lefty -lefty crime on Barucki as he hits a single, and then it's going to be Johnny Fagan continuing to crush the ball, goes opposite field with a two-run shot, and now the Reds are up 4-1 here in this ball game. They would take that lead into the ninth inning where the Aussie himself, Liam Hendricks, comes on looking for his fourth save of the season, and he would get just that as he gets Teoscar Hernandez to pop up into foul territory. Wade puts it away, and the Reds beat the Blue Jays in this interleague matchup by a score of 4-1. Nick Lodolo picks up player of the game honors here today. Seven innings, six hits, two Ks, no walks, and only one earned run given up. Lamont Wade had a home run to take the lead, make it 2-1, and then Fagan had a two-run shot to make it 4-1 in the eighth inning. Austin Hendrick had two hits. Liam Hendricks picks up his fourth save. Very close game, a pitching duel pretty much. Wade and Fagan's home runs were the difference in this one. So with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Cincinnati Reds franchise here on MLB The Show 22. I've been your host, Jersey Bourne, and I am saying, don't forget, the best time to start your fantasy football leagues is week one of the preseason.